Hi, John Capobianco here. We're going to be exploring a new-ish approach to retrieval augmented generation from Microsoft known as GraphRag. Now, I started doing graphing of network state information a few years ago with my Merlin project, and this really, really, really resonated with me. So what we're going to use is an LLM to create a graph from a text or a CSV file. Those are the limitations currently, TXT or CSV files. But we can create wonderful graphs that then we can chat with. So it's the retrieval augmented generation from a graph as opposed to, say, a traditional vector store or external API call with a, maybe an agentic approach. Now, this can be plugged into a lot of things. Any solution that builds on RAF, RAG, such as Raft or fine tuning using RAG, we could use this graph RAG as our source to generate data sets. I'm not going to get into that portion today, but we are going to explore graph RAG from Microsoft. I have an easily implemented Streamlit implementation where you can upload a text file, it will generate the graph, and then you can chat with it. That's going to be open source for you to use. And then after this recording, I'm going to do a live stream where I integrate PyATS, specifically executing the show run command to get the text back from a running config that then we can graph and chat with. That's going to be a follow-up exercise to this video. Let's take a look at the resources first and then my implementation. All right, this is really exciting. This is the evolution, the next natural step of retrieval augmented generation. We've seen raptor trees, which are another similar approach to building trees, but now we're going to build graphs. And even my dogs are excited about it. All right, we'll see you soon. Okay, so on Microsoft.com's research, they have a project called Graph Rag. And they have this wonderful demo, and you can see the graph in the background here. We are it's only about two minutes long, rag. two minutes long, a new and they focus the on the paper audience. first. So we can look at the paper here from local to global, a graph rag approach to query focus summarization. And the abstract is all available here. I'll be putting this in the notes of this video. But all of the technical specifications and um, you can see these wonderful root communities level, sub-communities level, um, different leaf and higher level communities. It's quite an interesting approach. And all of the math and science is behind it in this paper. Now, a little more practically, there are some blogs we can read. So unlocking LLM discovery on native narrative private data. This is applying RAG to private data sets, which is what we're going to do. And there's also this other blog, the research blog, new tool for complex data discovery now on GitHub. And this is the GitHub repository, graph RAG slash, you know, github.com slash Microsoft slash graph RAG. We're going to come back to this in a little bit, but this is a blog that's worthwhile reading. Um, some of the advantages, um, the results comparatively to native RAG responses using graph RAG. Some wonderful stuff on here. Now, I like to get right into the building blocks. So if we go to Microsoft GitHub IO slash graph RAG, and we go to getting started, we have the getting started steps. Now, it's really straightforward. Install the graph rag in a virtual environment with pip, pip install graph rag. Make an output folder, you know, make an input folder. And then they just give you the example of the uh, Chris, a Christmas Carol by Charles Dickens as the sample text. This is important. We're going to set up a workspace. Now, what this workspace looks like practically is this rag test folder, it will have a cache, an input, an output, and a prompt folder. Now we're going to explore this as I run this, but I've, I'm not going to empty the cache because I've already done this once 
with the OSPF RFC. And we'll talk about that in a little bit. But you'll get this folder structure locally. What's important is this settings.yaml file. Now this settings.yaml file, I can't expose it because it has my API key. But you can set things like the path. So for my storage, because I want to always have a static folder for my output, I've updated from timestamp to an output folder. At the very, very top of this file, you can either use your OpenAI key and the defaults from this settings folder. Now, I'm going to come back to this. Be very, very, very careful here. As you can see, I've actually set my API base to Olama locally, and I'm using Mistral for my LLM. For my embeddings, I am still using the Graph API RAG key, which is my OpenAI key, to use the cloud embedding service because there's so few embeddings that it's basically free. So go ahead and use OpenAI for your cloud embeddings and set this to a local LLM unless you want to spend quite literally hundreds of dollars, hundreds of dollars to make these graphs. So again, a severe warning, you want to install Loma, Olama locally and use the Mistral model locally for this LLM section when you run this code. It's very easy, install Olama, pull the Mistral model, turn on the Olama server locally, use local host here, and it will use this local LLM to create the graph. So let's go back to the documentation real quick. After we've done that, we can run the pipeline with whatever file is inside of the input folder. Now, I haven't tried multiple files. I will try that later. But for now, one file, and it can be either TXT or CSV. And we're going to deal with that later in my streaming code. But for now, we're going to use TXT. Finally, when it's all done, we can graphrag.query. And there's a whole query engine documentation here on how best to do local searches, global searches, and question generation. But we can ask, what are the top themes in this story, thematic questions from the global query, or more specific local questions about individual characters, who is Scrooge? Okay, so let's look into my implementation of all of this. What we're going to do is, um, we're going to do exactly what the documentation said to do, but in my streamlet code, I'm going to let users upload text files that will then get turned into graphs, and then reading these Parquet files, there are Parquet files that get created to store the data frames. We're going to use PyViz, PyViz, and the network X to visualize the um, graph. So we're going to visualize the graph. And then at the bottom, we're going to let people ask questions. And just for the sake of a hello world, we're going to ask the question against the global response and the local response. Now I could break this up and maybe have two input boxes ask a global question or ask a local question. For now, we're just going to ask both questions um, or, or the question against both local and global. So let's turn this on. Streamlit run document graph. And again, I'm going to use the RFC. So if I show you where my source is going to be here, if we look up OSPF RFC, there is 2328, and we can actually get this as text. So this is the working, you know, the RFC, the standard for OSPF version 2. And I've saved this as a text file. 
So let's go ahead and upload RFC 2328 and proceed to chat. Now, again, I have already done this and it took about one hour, but you can see here, it's starting to break it up using the LLM and creating the graph. So now it's actually hit the GPU. You can see the GPU is gonna to start to max out. Well, it creates the verb community reports. It has already cached all of these other steps, which took about an hour. Now you can see in the output folder, we have logs. So if we check these logs, there's no logs, which is good. And if I scroll to the bottom here, you can see that it's making the posts against my Olama chat completions API to finish this graph indexing. Okay, now in my output folder, I have all of these parquet files now, which I'm going to use to create the graph. Well, like I don't have to create it, it's used, that, that's the underlying files that store this graph which we're then going to visualize with PyViz and then be able to ask inference questions about the OSPF RFC standard. Now this is almost done and we'll see it drop out of GPU in a second here. Okay, now all final workflows have successfully completed and I've created this graph HTML page based on the visualization. So let's let the visualization load before we start asking questions from the data. And this will just take a second. Now, I have not fine tuned the visualizations. It's very, the, the, the deeper you scroll, the, there's a lot of overlapping text and it's very hard to read and understand. But I still like to visualize it. And I could adjust that PyViz code maybe to have some padding so that way the, the text doesn't overlap with each other, something like that. I still have to look into that. But in a second, we're going to see the graph of RFC 2328. So there it is, and it's pretty cool. So I can zoom in, and let's zoom in on something around the outside here, these three nodes here. So we have the neighboring routers ID, the IP address of the designated router and the IP subnet all seem to create this graph mesh of each other. And if I zoom out, we can see that there's some, some offshoots from the main, so I'm not sure if I can click this individual node here, but it looks like the default route, the text about default route has a whole different sub-branch, multiple paths, equal cost paths, and then it reaches deep down into the center of this new nebulous um, text with an IP address in there. Well, default route hangs off of type three summary LSS, LSAS. You know, so we have this full graph. Um, let's look in a question about uh, whether to become adjacent. How about something like that, right from the document? When should neighbors become OSPF adjacent? Oops. Let's try that again. When should neighbors become OSPF adjacent. Because we do have this adjacent section here mentioned 44 times. And hopefully it's going to be able to extract some of that. Now it doesn't actually mention port numbers, does it? So that was a bad question, maybe port numbers. Let's ask it about adjacencies instead. Although it did hallucinate, so that's unfortunate. So we're in GPU, so here we go. The global section.
Hello packets determine whether they are on the same subnet. This facilitates source and sending in for interface through the protocol. This is a lot better. And then there's the local answer. Here's the key structures involved in the process. Router ID, area structures, LSU, LSAC. Flooding procedure starts when the LSU packet has been received. So, you know, I would need to really look into the RFC, but that's much better when we actually ask it something that's referenced in the document. So what I'm going to do next is try to grab the running config from a device and do the same process. So I'm just going to live stream it, but what I'm going to do next is use PyETS to get the show run. Now show run is the running config, and we can save that as a text file quite easily with PyETS. We're going to save it in the inputs folder after we create our virtual environment for RAG, graph. Save that running config in the input folder, create a graph out of it, visualize it, and then ask questions about the running config. Now that's going to be easier for me to ask questions than an RFC that I haven't read in 20 years. So let's stay tuned. Don't be discouraged by the hallucinations. I just want to explore this new idea of RAG graph. The other thing I want to really stress if you've made it to the end of the video, be very, very careful with the cost. Be very careful if you use your OpenAI key, particularly for the LLM portion, it's going to cost you a significant amount of money. So be very, very careful here. All right, we'll see you soon on the live stream.